Now look, it's a fact, it's a good observation when they say many animals have a similar forelimb structure. That is a good observation. I agree. Then they say, they must have had a common ancestor. Oh, I disagree. This helps prove we all came from a rock. Oh, jump frog, jump. Then they say, we've got evidence from development. This one makes me angry, so I'm going to stay calm. We're going to do this in just a few more minutes, and then we're going to quit. Take a break. This book says, the similarity between early stages in development helped convince Darwin that all forms of life shared common ancestors. Darwin considered this by far the strongest piece of facts in favor of his theory. Haeckel called it the biogenetic law. A guy named Ernst Haeckel made up the idea that all the embryos of different animals develop through the same stages, fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. He called it the biogenetic law. This textbook says, the presence of fish-like structures in the embryos of different species shows that these animals have evolved from fish and share the basic pattern of fish development. Does the human embryo have gills like a fish? That's what the textbook says. This is a lie. Those are not gills. Those little folds of skin develop into bones in the ear and glands in the throat. They never have anything to do with breathing. I've seen people that have five or six chins and they can't breathe through any of them but the top one. <laughs> Ernst Haeckel, the German professor from Jena University, made up this entire dumb idea in 1869. Darwin's book came out in 1859. The next year it was translated to German. Haeckel read the book and said, wow, what a great theory. If only we had some evidence. Nine years later, they still had no evidence, so Haeckel decided to make some. He was an embryology professor. He's taught how embryos develop, so he took a drawing of a dog and a human embryo and changed them, made them look just alike, and said, see, this proves we have a common ancestor with dogs. Well, nobody caught, caught on or stopped him, so he did a bunch more. He took drawings of all kinds of different animals and faked them, and he made them all look very, very similar. Haeckel made giant posters of his fake drawings and traveled all over Germany and told everybody, you ought to believe this new theory because we've got the proof right here. After all, he's a, he's a professor of embryology. He wouldn't lie, would he? And how many folks back then had microscopes to check him out? We're talking creatures about this big, you know. Haeckel just about single-handedly converted the Germans to believing in evolution which led to the obvious conclusion, hey, if evolution is true, then maybe one race has evolved farther than the rest. I wonder who it is. Must be the Germans. We'll see where that led from tape five. On top are Haeckel's fake drawings. Underneath are actual photographs of what he claimed he was drawing a picture of. Haeckel lied deliberately. His own university held a trial and convicted him in 1875. He said, I should feel utterly condemned, except... Uh, Hundreds of biologists lie under the same charge. Everybody else lies, so it's okay for me to lie too. Haeckel's biogenetic law is as dead as a doornail, folks. It's not true. It never was true. Proven wrong, 1875. It's not true. He was convicted of fraud. His own university held a trial and convicted one of their own professors of lying. But his drawings are still used in textbooks in your county tonight. Proven wrong 125 years ago. Darwin wrote his book, 1859. He predicted evidence would be found. 1869, Haeckel faked the drawings. 1875, he was convicted of lying. But his drawings are still in textbooks 125 years later. Now, I know it takes a while for textbooks to get up to date. <laughs> but I think 125 years is long enough. They're still teaching this stuff in textbooks all over the world. This one says, if proof of evolution from a common ancestor because of the gill slits on the human, this is simply a lie. Here's a year 2000 textbook teaching it, 2001 junior high textbook. The similarities provide evidence that these three animals evolved from a common ancestor. What similarities, teacher? Don't you see they have tiny gill slits? Folks, this is a lie. Why are we still teaching this to our kids? There's a 2000 college textbook. Similar, humans and fish embryos resemble each other because humans and fish share a common ancestor. This college textbook says the human has gill pouches. Biology, arms in camp, one of the worst ones there is, shows a five to six week embryo, but then it says by seven months, the fetus looks like a tiny normal baby 
but it's not. It's not a baby at seven months. Hello? It's a human at conception. Every doctor knows that.